are watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, Jesus Christ changing the Lord. world this is with Charity the Word of Wilson God. On the Hour of Liberty with Christian Women Liberty Center. Thank you for tuning in. We're here again to consider why we as blacks are being downtrodden. Last week we treated a topic that asked a question. It says, should black men stand on the on their women to grow taller? Is that godly? Uh, being that we're Christians, yeah, uh, is there any difference between a Christian man and a non-believer to a woman that is married? Any difference? Have we noticed any difference between the Christian and the non-Christian? Because all of them are hailing man is head and woman is the tail and there's quite i don't see any difference in the treatment i don't see any difference in the treatment and i'm not the only one who have noticed it even other religion have noticed it in christianity so the christian men are just the same this week what we're going to treat is why the black man is forcing the woman to pay penalty that has already been paid by jesus yeah because the bible says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law be made a curse for us for it is written curse it is everyone that hangs on the tree that the blessings of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ and that we we the christians be you black or white should receive the that we might receive the promise of of the spirit hmm? through faith why is the Christian woman being referred back to Genesis chapter uh, 3 verse 16 when the Bible said something else you cannot punish a crime twice what is happening amongst blacks in Christianity is that the woman is being punished twice punished again for the crime that Jesus has already paid for and in that vein you're actually punishing Christ twice you're sending Jesus Christ to prison again for howling to the woman. They must be quiet. They must this, they must this and that. That man wrote that, by the way. That is not part of what the Holy Ghost inspired. No, he can't complicate himself. He can't tell us that we're redeemed by the blood of Jesus and come back to say that woman must not do this, must not do that and that because she was the one who forced him. No, Holy Ghost can't say that. That's why the Bible says that the letter the letters in the bible it kills it is the spirit that gives life it's because it 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 affords men it, it gives them what their flesh desire that's why they're howling and how man put that i don't mind telling you man put that scripture in the bible man and anyway they changed the book of psalm 68 verse 11 men changed it and it's in the bible when you go to the book of uh of of king if you go to the book of Psalms in king james you see it's a different thing that is written in in complete jewish bible and amplified that what is different meaning different things so i don't mind telling you that that is not part of what the holy ghost inspired no a lot of things holy ghost didn't inspire men put them in by themselves and when men sleep off in the flesh whatever they're saying is not the holy ghost and no man is 24 hours in the spirit no no woman no man is 24 hours in the spirit when they sleep on in the even while they're still receiving messages within a split of a second they can sleep on into the flesh and you find that the flesh gets in it's more part of the inspiration of the holy ghost i don't mind telling you that if you can report me to jesus if you're a christian and and check out with him the lord bless you jesus is lord and i'm reading unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee this is expired law it doesn't stand here if he still stands jesus died in vain it doesn't stand because this is what jesus was punished for yeah at the point of, by the way, do you know that Eve made a mistake, but Adam sinned with his two eyes open? That's what we call in hell informed choice. Yeah? If, if a man or woman comes to the hell, uh, well, we're talking about NHS England, you know, UK. I'm not talking about any other part of the world. If someone 
didn't know what they chose, what they signed. It was not explained to them. If he didn't explain the operation, if the surgeon did not explain properly to the understanding of the patient in this country, United Kingdom, and I believe in all over Europe, if they didn't explain the operation properly and they go cut the person open and operated and the person said they although they signed they did not understand it the surgeon would be liable to be sued unless they can prove that of a, of a truth they actually explained to this person what what they signed that they understood if they didn't the 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 the, 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 the signature is null and void. So Eve sinned not, not out of ignorance. She didn't know. But Adam was explained to. He knew what the matter is. He knew this cause. He decided within himself. That is what is called informed choice. Yeah? Inform, he knew what he was doing. With his eyes clean, he did it. He did it. He, he done it. You know, he, he, he committed high treason against the living God. Yeah? Okay, fine. The two of them were in errors. But why is the woman being beaten black and blue? Because she was the one who ate the fruit? She did it ignorantly. Adam did it with his two eyes open with full knowledge. So who now is in the wrong? Nevertheless, no one should be judged. Neither Adam nor Eve should be judged of these things. Why? Because Christ paid for it. He has paid for it. He said in the book of John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I am come that they might have, have life. And how much? Have it more abundantly. Do you know? You see this conception, multiplied in conception. The people that are suffering it now are ignorant Christians. I had two children before I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Okay. I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior as a teenager at the age of 13. I backslided and got married in the world. Yeah, got married to an unbeliever in the world. But whilst I was still married, I then, the Lord then drew me back to himself. I couldn't say I went back, you know, because it wasn't in my power. And then I, I then now went reconnected with Jesus Christ and then I became one of my children was born after I had now gone back to the Lord Jesus Christ do you know the conception was like a breeze like the Hebrew woman delivers before a the mid, midwife came in that was how it was you know I thought I was born again again and then read the Bible and I thought Lord this is the portion of the Hebrew we women. I should have, my first baby was 15 hours labor. Yeah? That's an unbeliever. That's what an unbeliever should be going through. Yeah? Because in sorrow will the unbeliever bring forth children. But not for a believer. If you go through it as a believer, you're ignorant of what your rights are in Christ. I don't mind telling you. Because I've tested both. Both sides. And, and you know, and I told, I spoke to the Lord. I didn't write it down. I just stood, read the Bible. I said, now, Lord, I am a believer. I have accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. And that makes me come on the platform of the Hebrew women. They deliver their babies before the midwives come in. Okay. Because my babies were born at King's College. And I had big encyclopedia for my obstetrics uh, history. So... When, as soon as I appeared, they brought and they, they looked at me, they brought it out and, and they said, oh, uh, we, we, we give you two hours and we send you home. But, and I said to the midwife, I said, no, you won't send me home. I've come here to deliver my baby. Why did I say that? Why, why was I so confident? Because the Lord had spoken to me. I told the Lord that this baby, I will deliver within two hours of labor starting yeah that's i will deliver everything within two hours and my baby will be born as a christian that's my portion i told the lord so then the the night of the day that my baby will be born the night of it i was sleeping the lord woke me up at about 2 a.m to say do your quiet time i said no no lord we don't do quiet time now it's too early we do quiet time at 5 30 and i went back to sleep 
and the Lord took me out because my things were already packed and the baby's things were in the boot and the Lord took me out and said because I chose my baby's name before she was born because I had had boys and I told the Lord I want a girl and she had a name before I was born so and the Lord took me on like that so he took me out and said bring Abigail's things out so he didn't say baby he said to me that's what Jesus said to me bring Abigail's things and I woke up and I said oh my god Abigail will be born today she will be born today and I and then I woke up and then as I woke up, I then went and had a bath. As I finished having a bath, my water broke. I went and sat down, had my quiet time, and I rang the midwife. And of course, the midwife had a look at my obstetrics history. And they go, oh, we will tell you when to come. I just, when my husband came back from work, I said, take me to the hospital and don't tell anyone. Don't speak to anybody. And uh, he drove me to the hospital. We went to the hospital and they were just looking at me. And then one looked at me, I said, uh, I said, oh, go and lie down there. Uh, uh, and when, uh, uh, after two hours, we send you home. I said, no, you will not send me home. I have come here to deliver the baby and I will deliver it before I go home. They just ignored me. And I was there going, walking up and down. Within a very short time, I was fully dilated and no, no, 7%. I went to toilet and I went and took the little midwife, very young midwife by her hand. By the way, I trained in the same hospital. <laughs> I took the little midwife by her hand. I said, uh, I want you to come and examine me. And when she examined me, she said, oh my God, you're seven centimeters dilated. I said, now nah, nah, you see, you won't send me home, will you? She said, no, I'm afraid not. I said, don't be afraid. We will deliver this baby. <laughs> and, uh, and then when after, where I was, they had prepared ventures for delivery, instrumental delivery, because they knew in their mind that this woman has had labor. But that was me as a non-believer. I am now born again, and I put my orders right. Do you know what I mean? They prepared ventures and forcep to deliver me, just for, my, for me. And I went, when I was walking about, I would go to the Ventus trolley. I said, you, you shall not shoot any arrow here. By the way, you came, toss shall it go back. You will not be used on me. I'm going to deliver my baby by myself. I walked over to the forcep trolley. I said, you, you will not be used on me in Jesus' name. I cancel you. You will not shoot any arrow here. And I walked. And I went and laid down. And, and then the midwife uh, came. By the time they came back, I was fully dilated and then they were trying to catch a uh, baby and my other baby was five kilograms born the one preceding this one was five kilograms i told uh, the lord jesus how much i want my baby weigh because i want to deliver her. do you know because the midwife thought she was so little looking at me she fell out exactly four kilograms four kilograms and that was the reason why I was able to deliver her by myself otherwise it would have been another cesarean section so if you are still suffering what is documented in uh, uh, you're a believer you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior you're living a Christian life you're you're still giving birth according to Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 you're doing it wrong you missed your right. You need to go back to the drawing board. You need to remember what the Bible said. The Bible, God said in the book in the, in the book of Isaiah, he said, "Remind me of things concerning my my my, my people Israel. Command give me." You need to go back to the drawing to say, "Lord, look, 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 look." It. He said, "The trouble is many Christians don't read their Bible. This is where you hold God. You hold Him straight." To say come 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 you you said did you say this yeah can i have it now please you said that and you can't lie eh? you can't the bible said you don't lie neither will you repent you have said you will do it you have spoken you will make it good now i want this in jesus name that's how to do it that's the way to do it so don't go referring the women uh back to the book of genesis no then that's a close bus stop that bus stop is closed that's why the blacks are being used and maltreated and because they're holding the woman bound where Jesus Christ re-delivered her. She fell from grace to grass and when Jesus Christ died and resurrected, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men and women. He took the woman, resurrected her above her fall, 
far beyond where she fell and she is now the queen yeah if she's born again if she's not born again of course she will be suffering genesis chapter 3 verse 16. that is why the deliverance of the black race is in the hands of christians depending on how you're treating your women that's how blacks will be treated all over the world if you keep quoting uh i suffer not a woman to teach uh, uh, adam for sin who's talking that that is gone no eh? as i look on the cross and i behold my savior's face and i heard a voice saying it is finished and i cried and shout oh god forgive me my sins and i heard mm, i heard a voice saying go home and sin no more yeah why are you punishing the christian women for a crime that jesus has paid the penalty for that's why the blacks are not moving forward it will come from the church if the church does not address the matter no one will address it ignore your preachers with the airplane that are coming to tell you that uh, uh, the meaning of of husband is master he's preaching for the devil the one that's saying that women should practice listening to their husbands he doesn't know the language of humility because the bible jesus told us what being head is being head is being a servant of all that's what it is you serve your wife if you're head if you're a servant you won't be uh, explaining how much respect they ought to give you no you are not born again maybe you were born again and you entered one of the societies the illuminati and went under the water to get power and nobody knows that but your words are giving you away yeah your words as long as you come to be as to be emphasizing the headship of man you miss the boat you missed it you missed the boat in christianity no you have missed the boat because look i used to go to, i used to attend a uh, scripture union uh, in my village when i was a teenager and do you know we have camping eh? when you go there all the university dorms the bank managers all the big dudes when you go to the camping all the men i'm talking about men they take the kitchen take the toilet and when if any woman comes there and they go to you oh, look sister you're not the only one who, who who wants a reward in heaven can you leave me alone please they're washing toilets university dorms bank managers director of companies i'm talking about nigeria in nigeria if you have like let's say 50 of them now in nigeria things will get better there are no more everything is how man should be serviced with food and sex how you should bow down to him what name you and i mean one of your med, one of your preachers say that if a woman calls her husband by his name it's an abomination i don't know what he wants he wants to be called jesus yeah maybe we call them savior yeah should we do that may my brethren jesus christ is lord the only master we have is jesus and we all are brethren that's what the bible said you know jesus christ said in the book of john chapter 10 verse 10 he says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy but i am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly female subjugation it's nothing to do with abundant life it's to do with slavery the people that wrote extensively about it first are aristotle socrates Aristotle first wrote, wrote that women are the next level to animals. So when you're emphasizing female subjugation, you're speaking the language of Aristotle. Hmm? You know, Aristotle and Socrates, they were the people that suggested that the beehives, that the leader of it has to be a male for the way it was organized. In the 20th, in 20th century, it was discovered that the, bee, the leader of the beehives are actually female. That's why it's called Queen B. Uh, so you need Christian men, you need, you need to quit following Greek philosophers. They're not Christians. Jesus Christ is not a and you they should stop teaching you guys philosophy in, in the college of theology. It's nothing to do with Jesus. It's nothing to do, it's a deviation from Christianity. You know, like when we say secular, it's secular, and secular means without God. That's what it means. The word the word that's made up secular it means without god and philosophy is without god it's nothing to do with god 
Jesus Christ is Lord. This is Charity Ebuesin on the Hour of Liberty. And if we are, we are, this, this is the Bible. And we're pointing the woman always to back to book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. Meaning that forget what Jesus did. He didn't do a lot anyway. That doesn't profit a woman. And you're cursing Jesus if you say that. If you're treating women like that, you treat it's Jesus that you're treating like that. You're de depriving him of the reward he should have in the life of women for what he suffered for women. That's what you're doing. So you and the devil are the same. Yeah? He said, the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, because it is everyone that hangs on the tree. Jesus took our curse. Jesus took the woman's curse that she received from the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. That's why the black race is still suffering. That's why the men are still sweating. They, can you see, he said that the land is cursed. Agricultural science broke it and it's Christianity that brought it. They farm and they reap bumper harvest. Bumper, that the food is so much that government in Europe had to subscribe it so they can give it to people and people eat their belly full. It's in Africa that you're suffering at the ground, not yielding food. Not, not in Europe. Because you, Europe has set their women free from the house of bondage. And, and when you set your women free from the house of bondage, technology will benefit Africa. It's, I'm not talking about mobile phones and your bank business. No. Technology in the thing. If there's no food in a country, you are nowhere. If you have to import the bulk of your food, you're still a slave. Yeah? You're still a slave. You're still slaving. Because you'll be slave to the people where you're buying it. Staple food in Nigeria is rice. Do you, do you, do you eat yours? No, you're still relying on imported rice. You're still relying on imported rice. Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and I'm reading from the book of Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, man means mankind. It means man and woman. Yeah, don't go with your head on, 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 cloud, on cloud nine. Man, when you hear it in Bible, means mankind. Yeah? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become me. Why do you not want Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 to be passed away in the life of, of the woman? That's why you're still sweating by the sweat of your brow. That's why you're still sweating. In the profession where I am involved, the government, there are certain things that the government of United Kingdom does not allow private sector in that area to open their business area until people who have my type of qualification are present there. And some of the times I only just need to show my face, then they can open the unit. And they're private collect money by, by the baskets. And people like it because they get treated quite sharp and short and snappy and they go. So all day I will sit in my house and tell them, if you're ready to bring such so amount of money, I will come. And I don't, I don't need to do anything. But I like to do it because that's what I'm trained in. And I, I like the joy that comes out of doing it. All they need to do is somebody with my qualification. I show my face, then they can open it. Otherwise, they're not allowed. <laughs> they're not allowed to open it. You, haven't got, you can't get to that level in, in Africa unless you set your women free from the house of bondage. Jesus Christ is Lord because we are new creatures. We are new creatures. Look at how many farmers do they have in United Kingdom? Do you know? Very small number. And they feed the whole 70 million. How many farmers? Everyone is a farmer in Nigeria. In Africa, everyone is a farmer. And the food is still not enough. That's the curse of Genesis chapter 3. That's where it's coming from. The portion of the man. Because you refuse the woman to go free from the house of bondage, so you're still suffering that way. Yeah? You're still suffering. Your only hope is setting the woman free, you know, into the liberty wherewith Christ has set her free and let her not be entangled with any more yokes of bondage. And you, the, the face of the living God will look favorably unto you. Let me show you something in the Bible. You know, <clears throat> because the word, it, uh, the, um, it, it says, because you refuse to set the woman free, therefore, any man, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Whether you're born again or, born, or not born again, you all are joined together, trading the woman under your feet. That's why Africa is not developed. Nigeria would have been better than Britain, France, and Germany joined together. They will be wielding sword that's greater than these three countries. But because may pride and ego in the, in the life of, of the black man is not letting him see well. He can't see properly. Pride and ego is, is a thing that covers your face. 
it, may, it blindfolds you. It blindfolds you. <clears throat> the world forcing black man to pay for deliberate uh, 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 for 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 deliberate sins for uh, to pay for deliberate sins you know the world is causing the black man to pay for the sins that have already paid been paid for because he is forcing the black woman to pay for what has already been paid <clears throat> although the woman was delivered was was deceived by satan man however made an informed choice he decided to do it he knew what he was doing yeah he knew what he was doing as the black man keeps beating the woman black and blue for forgiving sin the world keeps taxing the black man for for though deliberate but forgiving sin although the man sinned deliberately it has been forgiven in christ it was punished in christ because the black man will not let the woman go his woman go out from the house of bondage so the black man is the off scarring he's the slave of the world yeah He's the slave of the world. Listen to the book of Isaiah. He said, he says, it's not this, it's not Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6. He says, it's not this the fact that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that he break every yoke. But because you have not broken the yoke, you refuse the book of the the yoke of the woman to be broken, so you are under yokes by yourself. Black men black christian men christianity will not profit you anything until you let the woman go free from the house of bondage that's the whole essence of what we have been saying day in day out yeah because the bible says woe unto him that decree unrighteous decree and that right grievousness which they have prescribed jesus is lord this is charity blessing on the hour of liberty and i'm appealing to black men black african men let your women go free from the house of bondage so that your continent countries will develop like europe this is charity Ebersen on the hour of liberty god bless you jesus is lord watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God.